I love the rain. But my question is, when the rain hits the ground and soaks in, where does it go? That's what today's video is all about. So what is a watershed? A watershed is the area of land that drains into a particular creek or river. Here in my garden, I've created two ridges of dirt. These ridges represent mountain ranges, and the valley in between them represents the watershed. So what happens when rain falls on these mountains? What do you notice is happening? All of the water that's hitting the mountain is flowing down one side of the mountain or the other. So that mountain ridge is called a divide because the water is divided either to the left or to the right. But all the water that collects in the middle is shed down into the valley. That's why it's called a watershed. There in the valley is where we can form a creek, a river, a lake, a swamp, or some other type of wetland. These wetlands are what collect and clean the water that rains and hits the ground. So, what does a watershed look like in nature? Let me show you. Okay, so here I am in a watershed. Pretty much anywhere you go, you're in a watershed unless you're in a desert. Why? Because as I showed you before, whenever water hits the top of a mountain, a ridge, which is called the divide, the water has a choice. It's gonna go one way or it's gonna go the other. The only thing it doesn't have the choice about is the fact that it's going to go downhill. That's the only thing that pretty much is guaranteed to happen. It's either going to go downhill along the surface in the form of what we call runoff, or it's going to soak into the ground, become what we call groundwater. It's still going to go downhill, but it's totally out of sight when it happens because it's going to be happening under the ground. But every now and then, that groundwater is going to meet the surface of the ground and that water is going to bubble out onto the surface and begin to flow as runoff. That is what we call a spring. And there's one right behind me. Can you see it? Can you see it right here? Can you check it out? Here. Now you've got a better view. We've got a hole up here, this hole down in here, this one down here, and this path of runoff that goes right through that area. This was a spring. This was where groundwater, as it was coming down off this hillside, it came down under the ground, but at this point it erupted out. Maybe it hit a big flat rock or a big area of clay or something that stopped that water from continuing downhill under the ground. And instead, it hit it and burst out of the surface, flowed onto the surface, and continued to flow down the hill that way. Let's go see where it went. You can see where it flowed downhill following the ground right here. It went underneath this log right here and then cascaded down the slope right here, right into the river. This river is now draining. It's in the valley. Got the hillsides around us. Water hits the hillsides, flows down, collects into the river. Cool thing about the river is right here where we have water level, right here, this is where the groundwater, the water that's in the ground that's flowing through the mountain underneath the dirt, underneath the surface, as it's flowing down through this area, this surface here right here, right where the water is, this is the area where the groundwater meets the surface. In other words, the surface actually goes underneath where the groundwater is. Because this area is sloped downhill, all this water is flowing, right? That's what makes a creek or a river. That all depends on size. So, where exactly is this water flowing to? Let's go find out. We're only about a quarter of a mile from where I was just standing. We've already added two more creeks to this one, and now this creek has practically become a rapid. 
Let's keep following it, see where it goes. At this point, we've now drained about an extra six creeks, including that cute little one right over there. We're now draining in this part of the watershed, at this point in this creek, we are now draining over 25 square miles of Shelby County, Alabama. That's pretty impressive. All right, we're not done yet. Let's keep going. We are almost at the end. This is the Yellow Leaf Creek. The time we stopped just before this, we actually had a name. It was called Spring Branch. Now at Yellow Leaf Creek, you can canoe this, you can fish this, it's huge. Why? Because it's draining. The watershed for this creek is over 200 square miles. But we're not done yet. A little bit further, one more stop. Here we go. So where does our journey end? Out here at the Coosa River, the mighty Coosa River, traveling over 280 miles from Rome, Georgia, all the way down to Montgomery, Alabama. This river itself is draining. Its watershed is over 10,000 square miles, including parts of not only Georgia and Alabama, but even up all the way north into Tennessee. Now, even then, the journey of our water, when it rains here in Shelby County, the journey of our water does not end there because the Coosa River, it will merge with the Tallapoosa River and become the Alabama. The Alabama will continue to flow south and it will merge with the Tom Bigby River to form the Mobile River. The Mobile will then flow into Mobile Bay and out into the Gulf of Mexico. The Mobile River Drainage Basin, the largest drainage basin into the Gulf of Mexico, east of the Mississippi, drains over 44,000 square miles of Alabama. So that, my friends, is where the rain goes when it hits here in Shelby County. So that's what happens to the rain that falls around my house. What happens to the rain that falls around yours? I challenge you to go find out.